-hmm. Hello everybody, this is Mark from the Carmen Group and we are uh, doing our videos for the reselling business. Uh, I'm out of Arizona, Scottsdale areas, area and um, we've been doing, my wife Faye and I and Erica, my daughter, we've been doing estate selling and reselling for about, about a year. We've done it off and on just as kind of a hobby for probably three years but uh, we found out that now that we're retired we, we need a little extra cash coming in and so we've become much more dedicated to it. So uh, we'll start throwing up some videos and going to estate sales and showing you what we've been buying and what's been selling and what this market's like in this Arizona market. Um, my background uh, has been, uh, oh, I've been an entrepreneur. I've uh, been involved in everything from electric vehicles to um, oh, non-profit helping people with money problems uh, and I've done that, I had many different careers and um, so it's been a really excite exciting to start this business now uh, in the third act of my life being you know retired. So some of the things that I like to focus on is golf and uh, the one thing that we've found out about the golf business is it's changed significantly too because uh, in the old days even a couple three years ago we could go to the Goodwills, the thrift stores and we could find lots of golf clubs that we could resell. We could get in there and buy them. Uh, we could go to the golf courses. We could get some access to some of their used golf clubs or lost golf clubs. But that whole arena has changed too because now you have all these resellers like Second Swing Golf, uh, the First Tee, which is um, a group for young people and they now have a lot of the people bring their clubs to them and then they give them tax right off and then most of those clubs end up at the um, Second Swing or at various um, pro shops or the PGA stores or the global um, golf and uh, vans and all that, those secondhand clubs, and then they sell them and they mark them up. And so they are very difficult to get a hold of now. Now I still do it, and I, you know, I'll, buy, I'll try to find drivers and I sell some head covers and, you know, I find different things like this. This is some classic stuff. Uh, these are door stops um, and they're, so you can still find it, but certainly we've had to broaden our niche, if you will, and we do more um, items that, because uh, half the time even at the estate sales now, even though this is a golf mecca, a lot of times the golf clubs are 10, 15 years old and people just don't want them. Um, so uh, you think that there'd be all kinds of newer clubs there, but you know, the people that have passed on, they've stopped playing golf probably 10, 15 years ago. And so the clubs that are sitting in their garage, uh, a lot of times they're not worth anything or their kids have come in and sold them to the pro shops for a little money. And so that's made my business, you know, which was the golf club business, uh, much more difficult to make money at. So we've been uh, getting into more electronics uh, I do like doing the receivers, uh, you know, like the Morances and the Harmon Cardens and and um, Fisher and Macintosh, all of that stuff. That uh, Pete Pete does a lot of that stuff on Craigslist Hunter. He's one of my gurus that I watch every day, and I watch oh um, Mike with Global Voodoo. I like to watch um, Lon at Garage Flips. He sells a lot of neat stuff. And um, another young guy I like to watch is Chris. He's at um, Daily Refinement. And um, he's got some ideas that I think are valid in this new market that we're getting into. Um, we know now that 
um, the Goodwills have marked all their products up to sometimes even um, what retail, what I would sell retail at. I mean, I, I can find a driver now at the Goodwills and they'll be asking 40, 50 bucks for it. Where before, this driver here, I could buy for five to ten dollars and I could sell it for maybe 50. Now, there's no way. They've got them listed at what I would sell them, try to sell them for. And, and then even if you go and you try to buy them on a 50% day, um, they're still a little high. You know, I mean, $25 for that driver is not something that I would want to buy and try to sell it. 40 or 35 if there's not enough meat on the bone. So, you know, I, we try to go different places, garage sales, and um, we do some arbitrage, we go out look for clearances and stuff. Uh, but I do think in, in the golf arena, I'm probably going to have to get involved in some wholesale kinds of things if I want to sell golf clubs and um, get a little dabble a little bit into that to make that work. No. We are selling other things that we like. We do like um, things, you know, like here's a collectible. This is a Jim Beam music box. And I like, I like this stuff. Now, this interesting thing though, this is a long tail item because not everybody cares about this item. And it's probably people that are collecting golf stuff or the Jim Beam stuff. So I. Um, may have to sit on this for a while before anything's going to happen. The, uh, we do do some golf shoes. I like golf shoes and stuff. Um, you want to make sure you buy good quality because we've had some problems with those shoes. People get them and then they say they don't fit or they weren't wide enough, you know. And, and then you're dealing with all kinds of issues, uh, many of you know clothing sizing issues are always kind of a problem and, um, and there's some experts out there that uh, will try to get stuff free from you so you got to know what you're doing when you get out there and sell and then you know have people try to ship it back to you especially if you only paid less than what the shipping was on it sometimes you, you came in and let them keep them and don't fight them the fight but I've been starting to do that a little bit more now making sure that they have to ship it back where we take a lot more pictures now and ensure that things aren't broken or they kind of come up with ideas I sell a lot of trophies um, golf trophies but other kinds of trophies too and we run into things like people will say it was broken well they'll take a picture of something they have already and um, say that that was your product. So I run into that often where I have to make sure that um, we have enough documentation when we send things out that um, it's our product. Even golf clubs, I'll send out golf clubs and they'll send back and say, you sent me a left-handed one rather than a right-handed one. And they'll, they'll try to figure out a way to get them for nothing. So there's a real, some gaming that goes on out there uh, that I'm sure all of you know about. So, but um, you know, we're doing some vinyl. Um, vinyl is sometimes a long tail item, but it's easy, you know, you can get the vinyl and um, stack hundreds and hundreds of them in a small place. And so it doesn't take up a lot of storage. Uh, I, I like that, and of course I can listen to them. I love the old stuff, so I'm involved with that. Um, and, you know, I like the old die cast cars. Now, these things you think would sell like hotcakes and get high price, but this car here, uh, I think I paid 10 bucks for it, but the market value on it is only about 20, 25. So you have to know what you're doing. One thing I did run into, though, that was kind of neat. I did run into a guy that was, he was actually a, a movie producer from England. He lived here in Scottsdale. This was just a couple weeks ago. 
and he had a whole bunch of matchbox toys that were made in England. Hundreds of them. I mean, here's another, some of this stuff, and here's one that, uh, like a Coca-Cola, in the box, a lot of them. And they were marked, they had a mark for about $5, 5 to $10. And so I did go on a Saturday, and they still had a bunch of them left. People weren't buying them. So I offered the lady $25 for probably about 100 of them. She took it. And so I got boxes of them, but I, pulled, I, found, I went through them, and some are worth about 20 25 But for the most part, they're only worth 5 bucks. So I bundled them, put 50 of them on line right now, and I'm going to try to get $200, which, um, you know, is less than, it's probably $4 each, just to see if that'll work. So what I'm trying to do with my business is to figure out, like Pete and Mike and everybody is trying to do, is to get higher margins by maybe bundling things so you're not working um, and only getting five dollars for something and you're spending all day kind of um, spinning your wheels and not really making any money. So we're trying to do a little more of that but you know t we keep cash flow in. We'll accept um, offers sometimes that we might have waited a little longer but if, like I said on Saturday I bought um, some uh, Walkman earphones in the back package. Um, they're worth about $75 and I got an offer today for 40 bucks. Well, I took it because I, I just got them. Just got it uh, Saturday. Well, if I can turn $5, I only paid $5 for this, um, for these Walkman in the package. If I can turn it into $40 in one day, well, now I've got that $40 I'm playing with to buy other stuff. So I make, oftentimes, uh, especially if I can turn it real quick, I'll accept the buy it now and not wait two months to pick up maybe $50. So I, I have created more cash flow that way and I'm doing more of that. Um, so, and we're going out and we're doing more garage sales and um, arbitrage. We're, we're definitely going and looking for stuff new in the, the package and we're going to different places like Burlington and um, Walgreens and Walmarts, the neighborhood Walmarts where you can get maybe ink cartridges that are brand new not expired uh, because they're not turning very well in their small stores and then we um, get them on there and I've got people that will buy them from me right away. So. That's exactly what you have to do in this business, is you have to network. And I have some people that will buy golf clubs of a certain kind right away from me. And uh, I get paid right away. I don't have to worry about, you know, waiting a month or two months if, whether I'm going to get paid or not. So you have to create those partnerships, I believe, uh, to make that this work. Um, so, you know, generally, Everything's going pretty darn good. I, I mentioned that I'm retired now, and I'm, we're making, we're generating about maybe fifteen hundred, two thousand a month. But we want to double that, so we're really focusing on it. My wife, she's retired too now, and she does the listing. I mean, I do the listing. She does the photos and uh, kind of inventory control, and I do all the listings. It works out very, very nicely. Uh, so we got pretty good train. We both go out and do our sourcing. Uh, she goes into her areas into the Goodwills or the thrift shops where her expertise is and I go into mine and then we come back and uh, we buy stuff like that and make, make it pretty quick so we can do a lot of stuff pretty dug on quick. Anyway, um, just want to alert you, we will be um, doing more videos showing you the estate sales. Of course, we're in Arizona, Scottsdale area, in the Paradise Valley area. So you'll get a chance to see a lot of mansions um, and see how those folks live. We, it's funny because those folks, you know, the other day we were in one place and they had a statue they were wanting $55,000 for. 
and that was with a reduction of by 25 percent and so of course it's a different animal here sometimes you may think that going to the rich people's homes is better but it's not because they're expecting to sell stuff for much higher and that's extremely long tail items uh, if you're going to start buying some of the stuff that they have collectibles and different things i mean thousands of dollars for artwork and um, all stuff that they maybe went on a safari over in africa and that kind of thing so and then the other thing like i said you know, even though this is a golf mecca um, there's not as many golf clubs around because the uh, second swings and all the other pro shops are giving people money they're buying people's used clubs the good stuff so i haven't been able to find that but you know we're into it we're i'm i'm gonna watch the guys on and the gals on uh, youtube and uh, hopefully you guys watch and you'll learn from our channel also so uh, again have a good evening and we'll talk to you soon bye bye